what all options should be considered um, in terms of Ireland's energy future. Uh, what we need is an open, frank and informed debate about this. And I think that if we have such a debate, we'll very quickly rule out nuclear power for a number of key reasons. Um, the nuclear option has been brought back into popularity in recent times for two, two very compelling reasons. First is we've hit peak oil, or we're about to hit peak oil, which means that our supply of oil is going to start to dwindle. Second, our, our concern about climate change means we're looking at any way to reduce our climate emissions. But nuclear energy isn't a renewable source, it's a finite source just like oil. So if we shift from one finite source of energy to another finite source of energy, we're going to be facing the same problems that we're facing now with oil, with nuclear power, in a number of years' time. The second argument given for considering or for, for going the nuclear option uh, currently is the question of climate change. The most pressing issue facing mankind is the requirement to reduce our carbon emissions. However, if you look at the entire life cycle of a nuclear power plant, from the mining, transportation, uh, production of energy to waste storage, uh, the carbon savings, if any, are negligible. The single biggest disadvantage of nuclear power and the weakest argument uh, that it's always been there for nuclear power is the waste issue. Uh, we would create a waste legacy that would last for 10,000, uh, 10, 20,000 years. And that's an enormous scale of time. It's almost unimaginable to us. I mean, we, our, the average lifespan is 60 to 70 years old. The average time for an empire is probably about 500 years old. We have the sense of permanency as humans, but we're here for only a fleeting moment. Yet we're leaving a toxic wake, waste legacy for 10,000 years. So to leave not just to our children, but to our great, great, almost times infinity grandchildren, a toxic waste legacy, just so that we can generate electricity today, seems to be almost a dictionary definition of consumer-driven immorality. The nuclear industry never deals with this issue. They never factor it into uh, their cost-benefit analysis. They never factor it into their environmental analysis. They often say that it's not a technological issue, although it is, we still can't guarantee that we can create containers out of which nuclear waste won't leak after 5,000 years. How could we? They then say it's a political issue, but of course it's a political issue. No. Uh, campaigner in favour of nuclear power would be happy to have a nuclear power dump in their backyard. The, the second reason why we shouldn't consider a nuclear option, the nuclear option, is the question of the sheer expense of these things. You never see a private sector consortium coming forward with a proposal to build a nuclear power plant. The reason for that is because the cost of nuclear is so prohibitive that only the state can build it. Um, the insurance costs alone for a nuclear power plant are unpayable. They're really not insured. The legacy and the, the insurance legacy goes to the state. In England alone, they've subsidised the nuclear in industry to the tune of billions of pounds over the course of the last 30 or 40 years. A similar investment in energy conservation or renewable energy would rule out the need to even discuss nuclear uh, as an option. And then, of course, the final and one of the most compelling reasons is that of nuclear proliferation. Um, we can't start talking about telling countries like Iran that they can't build nuclear power plants when we're going ahead to build our own. So if we build nuclear power as an option in Ireland, then nuclear power stations will be deemed to be the, the preferred option to deal with the energy crisis across the world. And there's a very short step from a nuclear power station to nuclear weapons technology. The fundamental thing that we need to do in terms of our energy requirements is to reduce the amount of energy we consume. There is an infinite demand for energy out there currently. We have a very unsustainable transportation system. We have the most car dependent, uh, low density housing uh, in probably the Western world outside of certain parts of North America. So the first thing we must do is get back to a low energy consumption in our transportation options, but far more importantly, in our homes. Uh, it's disastrous for Ireland that over the last 15 to 20 years we've built 30% of our housing stock, but we've built it to a very low standard. If we'd actually insulated our homes, we could reduce our home heating bills by up to 80%. That would then reduce the amount of energy demanded and reduce our carbon emissions. So energy redu reduction has to be the cornerstone of Ireland's energy policy. The second thing we need to do once we've done that is we need to look at uh, renewable technology. 
Denmark made the shift to renewable technologies, to wind power, in the very early 80s. And it's now a world leader in, in wind power, with 22,000 jobs created domestically and a massive export market, both for energy and for technology and technological competence. It's often argued that nuclear power is a great provider of jobs, and there's no doubt about it. It is a provider of jobs. However, the scale of a renewable energy sector in comparison to a nuclear power sector is much greater. There's a much greater variety of jobs, they're much bigger projects, and they're much cleaner. So we should look to do that in Ireland. Maybe we're behind the curve in terms of wind energy, but certainly with tidal and wave energy, there's a gap there that we should move quickly to exploit, and that would be a real boon not just to our economy today, to our economy in the long term, and to our uh, descendants far off into the future.